first song is about the place we come to where God gathers us in. And it's also a song about how we minister and gather others in. Good morning. Welcome to this place of worship. If you happen to be a guest this morning, a special welcome to you and welcome to all who are worshiping online. If you are a guest, there are guest cards in the seat back in front of you. They're yellow and I encourage you to fill one out. Return it to the welcome window across the way for a gift in exchange for that card and a chance to get to know you a little bit better following the service. Um, Following the service, immediately following, up here in the choir area, there will be prayer available for anyone seeking some prayer. And uh, so just come on right up, and Sal will, will, will take your prayers and pray with you. Uh, coming up this Tuesday is the blessing of the animals. And I was told this week, make sure people know it's Tuesday. So it's Tuesday, folks. Bring your animals, your birds, your lizards, your rhinoceroses, whatever you have, and we'll bless them and you at the same time. That's six o'clock. And that will be over at Promise House, just on the other side of the wall of the parking lot. Um, guys, Thursday night is Guys Night Out, Cafe Sabor. If you are planning to go, please try and connect with Dana who is making arrangements and will need to know how many to reserve for. So please connect with Dana. This Friday, we're back to first and third Fridays, but the time has changed. So if you have a child in K through five and they're coming, please not only let me know, but please mark the time change at 4 p.m. when before it was at three. Uh, looking ahead to the 14th, a Saturday, there's going to be a community lunch sponsored by New Promise for the neighbors surrounding New Promise. So the lunch will be in the parking lot, and this is uh, put on by the E-team or the outreach team, uh, evangelism team at New Promise, and it is free. So please come. It's a great chance to meet those who live in the immediate area and get to know one another, and a chance to talk about ministry and life at New Promise and Promise House. 
And then on the 17th of the month, there is uh, an event for any adult who is passionate about preteens and teens. It is being titled, How to Listen So Teens Will Talk. And so I'm inviting anyone who would like to be part of that. It's going to give you some tools for being able to work with and speak to, and most importantly, listen to uh, the young person in your life. Now, you don't need to sign up, but do, you know, if you do really plan to come, I'd like to know just so we have a, a verbal count of maybe how many materials to have. Otherwise, just show up, and we'll try and have a few extra. So that's coming up uh, later on this month, and I encourage all to come to those events. Um, that's it for our parish notes. I invite you to rise as you are able and face the font. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us take a moment before God in humility, confessing our sins. We pause to remember those things for which we need forgiveness. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We're afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us in Christ. You are already and always forgiven. Amen.
come into the presence of I am. We come into God's presence with wonder. God's name is holy and eternal. We speak God's name with joy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. God of deliverance, you called Moses to be your hands, feet, and voice in a troubled world. Teach us how to walk, work, and speak your word in a troubled world. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Mark chapter 12. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God, not of the dead, but of the living. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A reading from Exodus chapters 1 and 3. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built cities, Python and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. Then the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, 
I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then God said, I have observed the ministry of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on the account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelis has now come to me, and I have seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord your God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Egypt, Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll invite the kids to come on up and spend some time up with me up front. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, have a seat. Nice to see you all today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Could you, come on up, Nero. Come on up, we'll make room. Yeah, he's gonna sit by his sister. Can you move this way then? All right. Oh, wait, oh. all right, you just make up your mind. All right, we got him. Oh. What's your name? Ashlyn. Ashlyn. Ashlyn, how was your week? Good. Nice. Have a good week? You're looking forward to ne next uh, coming up week? That's good? Yeah. I am too. I think it's going to be a good week. Um, yeah, what's your name? Mary Catherine. Yeah, Mary Catherine. Right, right, right. Did you recognize anything in the scripture this morning, the, the reading? about Moses? I was thinking maybe there'd be a song playing through your mind as you heard that. Oh, I know. The one from camp. Which one from camp? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh, yeah. That's the Moses guy that was mentioned in the text today. Leading his people through, yeah, yeah. And what's your name? Courtney, right. Did you recognize anything else in that story? Nothing else? Nothing about God remembering God of your ancestors? That too was part of a, a day camp song. Anyway, I, I, the, the song, the text came alive for me today in a number of ways. And one of the ways the text came alive was listening to the fact that Moses asked the same question I just asked the three of you. What is your name? 
Now, I knew your name. That's why you gave me that puzzling look like, oh my gosh, Pastor Jill, you don't know my name? I know your names. And in the story today, Moses needed to hear from God, God's name. Who did God want to be called? And God gave a name. What name did he tell Moses he was? What was the name he gave? It was weird, too. I am who I am. Hello. Uh, hi. What's your name? Dan. Okay, ask me mine. Uh, Pastor Joe? No, no, no. <laughs> ask me my name. Smart, <laughs> You're just too smart, man. You're just too. What if I said I am who I am? Uh, that would be kind of weird. But God gave his name so that his people would know him know him as the God of the ancestors, and be able to call on him. If I don't know your name, Chase, how am I going to communicate with you? I mean, we can talk, right? But it helps to know the person's name you're addressing. Right, Mila? And it feels good when someone says your name. Right, Camden? And Marlo? When we call on God, to be able to name God and call God by name is an important part of our relationship with God. So whether you call on God in prayer and you say, God, please listen to me, or if you say, I am, come down and listen to me, you're still calling on God, and that is good for your relationship. So when you go home tonight, and when you pray, and when you guys take your prayer pillows home, and you pray tonight, feel free to use that name in prayer and draw God close. They're getting prayer pillows, you're getting a Bible. Yeah, it's a dual thing today. Okay, Mary Catherine. All right, let's stand. Yes, that's what those pillows are for. Okay, shall we pray? Grab a hand there, Marlo. All right. Lord God, you call each of us by name and draw us into relationship with you. We call on you, God, our Father, the Father of our ancestors, the Father of your Son, Jesus Christ, to, to uh, listen to us as we call on you and to hear our prayers. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So here at New Promise, since, um, since September 10th, we have been reading lessons from what we call the narrative lectionary. This is a lectionary that follows readings that tracks with the story of God's uh, people from Genesis to Revelation. And uh, today, for the first time, we move out of Genesis. So, so far, we've had three stories from Genesis. Today, we move into the second book of the Bible, which is Exodus. We get the deliverance of God's people from bondage in Egypt. And here we are skipping over a significant portion here. This is not just skipping a generation here, but we've skipped over a whole uh, story. So, I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest of this story. So, Last week, we had a sibling rivalry, the story of Jacob and Esau, uh, and what we're skipping is another sibling rivalry, this between the sons of Jacob, and the principal character in this story is Joseph. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds like a very, very important story. Why are we skipping the story of Joseph, right? Obviously, I have no idea. Uh, and I'm, I'm as heartbroken by this as you are, obviously, but I didn't create the narrative lectionary, so we just have to deal with it. So, 
Actually, we did hear a part of that story last year in the narrative lectionary, and I'm sure we'll hear it again coming up. But for now, I'll just summarize. So Joseph is sold off into slavery by his brothers, and he becomes a slave in Egypt. But everything Joseph does seems to turn out right. Joseph is blessed. God is with him. And so all the people who are over Joseph and whatever they trust to him just seems to, uh, to multiply. And so Joseph is just this very gifted person and blessings come whenever Joseph is in charge. And so eventually, Joseph comes to the attention of Pharaoh. Pharaoh needs, he's had this dream and he needs Joseph to interpret the dream. And Joseph declares that the meaning of the dream is that there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. And the Pharaoh is so impressed, he puts Joseph naturally in charge of all of the stores of Egypt's food for this period. And again, Joseph is blessed. And through Joseph's leadership, there is this great abundance that he stores up. They have enough not only to provide for Egypt during this period of famine, but they have enough to sell to other nations. And Egypt, through this, becomes a powerful and wealthy nation. This is also how the Israelites come to be in Egypt, right? Joseph's family comes, and there's this whole part of the story about the reconciliation of Joseph and his brothers, but Joseph provides a place for his family in Egypt, and not only is God with Joseph, but God is with Joseph's family too, and they are uh, very blessed, and they become this great, numerous people, and that's where Genesis leaves the story, but things change at the beginning of Exodus. Here's how the story for us began today. Now, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. This new king does not know Joseph or the Israelites. To him, him, they are just this large category of people that create anxiety and fear. Because all he knows about them is that they are more numerous than the Egyptians, and if the enemies of the Egyptians go to war, they could conceivably join and help defeat Egypt. And so out of fear, he enslaves and oppresses the people. And that is why God calls Moses in our story today. Now, we've read a small part of this story of Moses, and there is more to it, Um, but one of the elements in the story today is this naming element. Um, And in fact, every story that we've dealt with so far has had a naming element as a part of the story. We opened this year's narrative lectionary with the creation story. We heard about the creation of the first human being, right, Adam. And I mentioned in my sermon that Sunday that Adam technically is not a proper name. Uh, It's really more of a description, right? Literally means earthling or one created from the earth. But over time, we have come to see that or adopt that as Adam's name. That's true even in the New Testament. And so it's kind of a naming incident, right? Then uh, Katie shared with us a story about Isaac, and we learned the reason for Isaac getting his name, which means laughter. And it comes from the fact that both Abraham and Sarah found the idea of having a child at their old age laughably ridiculous. And so God played a really good joke on them and gave them laughter. And then finally, last week, we heard the story of Jacob wrestling with God. And there was a naming element in that story too, which I didn't really focus on. But in that wrestling, when Joseph demands a blessing, it comes with a new name. And the new name is Israel, which means one who strives with God. (coughs) Isn't that interesting that the people of Israel should take that as their name, but that is what they do. 
Naming stories are not rare in the Bible. They're actually fairly common. We skipped over the whole naming of Abraham and Sarah. We skipped over uh, other names too, and the, the Old Testament is full of them, but we'll see them again. Simon in the New Testament will become Peter, and Saul will become Paul. Clearly in the Bible, names are very important. Um, very often in the Bible when there's a naming event, it's because uh, a character in the Bible is taking on a new identity or receiving a new calling. But even when we don't get the backstory of the name, names are important. Names identify people in the particular. Without a name, we can only be an abstraction, right? One within a category, American, foreign, man, woman, Democrat, Republican, right? Mormon, Lutheran, Packer fan, right? Lions fan. So you see how this works, right? Um, Names are important. Uh, the gift of a name is that it allows you to be known as an individual and not simply one of a category that you may or may not fit into, right? Now, in today's story, as Jill pointed out, it is God who gets a name but as Jill also pointed out, this is an unusual naming story. And I have to think there was more to this story than is actually recorded in the Bible because this story has a kind of Abbott and Costello, who's on first kind of quality to it, you know? I mean, uh, Moses says to God, okay, you want me to go to the Israelites and tell them that you have sent me to deliver your people from bondage, but what if they ask your name? And God says, Tell them that I am who I am. That's my God voice, by the way, in case you didn't know. I am who I am. That's the official story. But don't you think Moses would just want to, you know, ask some clarifying questions? Like Moses would be like, well, okay, you are who you are. Got that. That's good. But who are you again, right? And God's like, I am. And Moses is like, you are who, right? God's like, I just am, or just I am. And Moses is like, oh, got it, just I am. Good name, God, that's a good name. And, Moses, and God would be like, no, just I am. And Moses would be like, oh, I get it, I see. Just I am who, right? This could go on, right? You see the potential for comedy here. Now, I'm not trying to make fun of God's name, although I do apologize to you in the front if you are singed by the lightning that should strike me for making fun of God's name. But my point here is that God gives himself a name and it's unusual, right? It's typically pronounced Yahweh in English, which makes it sound like a proper name. But honestly, it's not even a noun. It's a verb. I am. I am who I am is what he says. It can also be translated, I will be who I will be. Now, historically, that name has been understood by Christians in a kind of ontological way as a statement of God's being or essence, right? His eternal nature, his transcendent nature, his unchanging nature. But there is another way to understand that name, which I think fits better with the story, the context of the story, and I think better explains Israel's experience of God. The name can be understood relationally. When God first introduces himself to Moses at the burning bush, God doesn't say, I am the God who was above and before everyone and everything. Right? Instead, God says, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. 
In other words, God's introduction to Moses is through the relationships by which he has a connection to Moses, his ancestors. It's a relational introduction. And given the way God introduces himself to Moses, it seems to make more sense to understand this name as not a declaration of the eternal nature of God or the essence of God, but it's a name that conveys the openness and possibility of what God can and will be for Israel. When the, when the Israelites finally do make it out of the promised land and they get to Sinai, God repeats God's name. He says, I will be your God, right? His name is right there in that statement, I will be your God. But that's only half of the statement. The rest of the statement is, and you will be my people. God's name only fully makes sense in the relationship of God and God's people. It is a relational name. Now, at the time that God gives this name to Israel, there's not much history there, right? There's not much to give confidence in this God and the possibilities of what his name could become because they just don't have any history. And frankly, it was a long time ago when God was God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? But God is faithful. And God does become whatever Israel needed God to be throughout their history. So that as we look back over the Bible now, we can see that the Israelites had many names for God, many ways of referring to God. Creator, Deliverer, Savior, Redeemer, Comforter, Judge, Warrior, Mighty One, King of Kings, Provider, God of Peace, Healer, Our Righteousness, Merciful God, Good Shepherd. It's only a partial list. But these are a sampling of who and what God became for the sake of God's people. These are examples of God living up to God's name for God's people. All that is to say that names are important. They are relationally important. They are a gift. Now, it used to be in the church that first names were given as a part of the rite of baptism, right? That's why your first name is called your Christian name. We don't really do that anymore, but naming is still important in the Christian church. Uh, in baptism, you enter into the, the people of God, right? It is an entrance right into the people of God. But even though you enter into this community, you do not lose your identity in this community. You are an individual who is known and loved within that community, that category of people, right? And the truth is, in, in baptism, it is God who is the one who names and knows you individually and loves you for who you are. And it's a way of proclaiming that all the promises of God declared to the people of God are yours uniquely and individually as well. Your name is a gift, a relational gift. And in addition to the gift of being given a name, God also gives us the gift of His name. God gives himself a name because God desires to be known relationally. In Luther's explanation of the second commandment, he says this. This is the commandment not to take God's name in vain. He says, 
We are to fear and love God so that we do not use God's name to curse, swear, lie, or deceive, but we are to call, we are to use God's name in every time of need to call on, pray to, praise, and give thanks to God. There are not just restrictions on how we use this name, but we are invited to use this name to call on God. By giving us a name, God bestows on us the full promise of the name that God entails, right? That God will be God for us in all the possibilities and circumstances that we may face. And furthermore, God invites us to call on Him in all such circumstances. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Go Lions. Stand on up, everyone. Oh, no.
invite the congregation to please be seated. And I'm going to invite up um, the families that are receiving prayer pillows today, Davis and Brooks, and then young Mary Catherine and her family receiving a Bible. Will you three families come forward? Find us place up front. Do you want to go back and get them? Yeah, yeah. I'll wait. So um, part of the ministry of New Promise is to support the young families in their ministry to their children, bringing them up in the faith. And from age zero to five, we give out prayer pillows for the families to use with their children each month. And each month, you will be receiving prayer cards uh, in your mailboxes that you can put in the in the little pockets to pray for your with with for and with your kids each week, and then um, as we uh, know that we give Bibles out for third grade, and Mary Catherine, a new third grader this year, will be receiving her Bible this morning. So um, I'd like to um, start with Mary Catherine as we have one person still coming from the nursery. So um, Mary Catherine. I have for you a Bible. And this Bible has existed for generations upon generations, and I bet mom and dad have one somewhere on the shelf at home. This is a very special book. Yours is quite colorful. And I would like you to use that book in all different kinds of circumstances. So like if you get home from school and you've had a really awesome day, Go into the Psalms and find the ones that say, praise God and listen to how God celebrates your day with you. Maybe you've had a really frustrating day at school and you want to just really vent. Well, open the Bible up and find an opportunity for venting and listen to God as he calls you precious and loved. And then, you know what, if you're bored... There's plenty to read in there and some really good stories, but not only by yourself. Mom and dad, this is an opportunity for you to join with Mary Catherine in reading God's word and telling those stories and reminding yourselves of how great and gracious God is. So let's pray for your family and then we'll, we'll have our, our pillows. Lord God, bless these parents. Strengthen Amy and Rich. Encourage all parents in their parenting that they may lead godly lives as example to their children of what it means to follow you. Watch over Mary Catherine as she grows and learns of you, that she may also strive to know you better and be in relationship with you. Help all of us to continue our faith journey always striving to know you deeper. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Congratulations, kiddo. Parents, actually, Jack, would you come out here? Jack's got some beautifully colored prayer pillows that were made specially by a member of our congregation. And they are going to Camden over here, if you wouldn't mind, Jack. And to Marlo and Theo. Hillary, Logan, and Jacob, God has blessed you with children. He has blessed you abundantly with the gift of being parents. And as parents, we pray for our children all the time. It's much harder to find the time to pray with them. These prayer pillows are your gift in an opportunity to share some of that time in prayer with your child. Children, Theo, Marlo, Camden, if mom and dad get so busy and they're just like, I don't, wanna, I don't know if I have time, bring your prayer, prayer, prayer pillow out and show it to them and say, mom and dad, can we pray? Show them that prayer pillow and spend some time with mom and dad in prayer 
using some of those cards as your guide, okay? It's given as a tool to establish that time as family, a time when you can set apart the activities of the day and the scrolling of the phones in togetherness to share that time together, to turn to Christ and grow together in Christ as a family. So I'd like to pray with and for you as well. Lord, bless Marlo, Theo, and Camden, their parents and their faith. Strengthen and encourage all parents in their parenting that they may lead godly lives as examples to their children of what it means to follow you. Watch over these youngsters as they grow and learn of you. They may also strive to know you better and be in relationship with you. Bless all parents and children and keep them in your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let's give thanks. You may return to your seats, and we'll have our creed. I invite you to stand and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With gratitude for our whole selves, created in your image and made new in Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of action, as with Moses, you call the least likely and give them everything they need to carry out your will of love and justice in the world. Help us to hear and answer your call despite our fears and doubts, and fill us with trust in your promise to walk with us through every challenge. Eternal God, in mercy, hear our prayer. You covered the earth in vegetation, from simple mosses to giant sequoias, along with every plant we cultivate for food. Make us careful stewards of soil, water, and all that every green thing needs to survive and thrive. For the benefit of all creation, eternal God, in mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we provide your provision, protection, and power. Rest upon all those who serve or have served in our military and as our first responders. Please place the heads of protection around our men and women and let your angels stand guard over them. Bless them and their families for their sacrifices and service. Eternal God, in mercy, hear our prayer. Call, equip, and guide medical professionals in every specialty so that they might carry out your healing work every day. Bring health and wholeness to all who experiment experience ails of body, ailments of body, mind, and spirit. We also pray for those listed in Promising News who have asked for prayer. Prayers from the congregation are now invited aloud or from your hearts. In mercy, hear our prayer. In nations overflowing with wealth, 
Children still go to bed hungry every day. Strengthen all who strive to change the inequities embedded in our economy and social systems, that all might have life and have it abundantly. Eternal God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, please help all people affected by the catastrophic floods in Libya. We also pray for safety and strength to those providing aid. Eternal God, in mercy, hear our prayer. We are filled with gratitude for the saints who proclaim to us the name of God, who showed us how to answer God's call and who equipped us for the journey of faith. Help us to shout your name in love as they did until we stand together in your presence once again. Eternal God, in mercy, hear our prayer. We place in your loving arms these our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. So with you, please share that sign of peace. Please be seated.
invite you to stand as we bring forward our gifts and offerings. I am, you make yourself known to us in so many ways, not least of which in the provision of all that we need to survive and thrive. In awe of your generosity, we give back to you what we have been given for the sake of your liberating work in the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, who liberated God's people from Egypt, also liberated all creation through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come share now in this holy feast in remembrance of Jesus' saving grace. All is ready. I invite the congregation to be seated.
having shared in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, please stand and sing, send us out. Lord, of this table we gather with all your saints, past and present, with those who gather in congregations around the world, and with our homebound who will receive by home communion. Renew us in the gift of your body and blood, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you bless you now and forever. Amen. For everyone born, I'll raise up the table. Are you ready? For everyone born, water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. For everyone born, a star overhead. And God, who we are created for justice.
Though in peace, God is at work in you. Justice and joy. 